Can this conference it? will now be recorded. <laughs> can you hear us, Chris? Uh, I can hear you, yep. Okay, great. So we're going to do project meeting first, so we can do the marketing campaign. So I'll let you start. Yeah, let's take a roll, right? You good? Yeah, we're, we're good. Okay. Uh, I'll forward to Amron's comments and we'll move right to print. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Chris, you're up. Oh, I'm sorry. I was uh, I didn't know you're talking to me. See, you're looking in one direction and I'm I'm looking at another one. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, okay, just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the marketing program. Um, uh, basically, you've run it for another year. Uh, it has continued to deliver, um, you know, a significant amount of traffic to the Etsigo Now website. So just kind of in brief summary, uh, we've talked about this several times, but in brief summary, you, you, you have a campaign that ran about two years ago. Um, and it was designed to reach uh, the people that might be looking to start businesses uh, outside of the New York City area, and also, uh, and those are kind of individuals that were, you know, run, looking to work remotely, and then you have the kind of the businesses that are looking to um, relocate. So year one that ran, it delivered tens of thousands of hits to the Etsigo Now website, exposed, uh, exposed at Seago County to those people. Year two, we refined the campaign pretty uh, heavily. Basically, we, we kind of geared it more towards the businesses that were searching for, you know, land and starting a business and, you know, all the opportunities that Seago County has. It delivered a similar amount of traffic to the website. Um, we're talking 30, 40,000 people to Otsego County's website that would not have gone or seen the website otherwise. Um, and so basically, you know, and, and the campaign, again, is, you know, split into two major components there. Again, you've, you've got people that are searching for these terms. Uh, Otsego County is now coming up. And then you've, you've got, based on the targeting, the type of people we want to target through things like LinkedIn, um, we're basically putting advertising in front of the quote unquote right kind of people. And so that campaign's been been running um, in one way or the other for the last two years, uh, delivered uh, a ton of people to Otsego County's website. And so I think uh, Otsego County, uh, Otsego now has to decide uh, to whether or not they want to proceed. I believe this is the last month of that campaign. So at Seagull County has to decide if they want to continue on with this marketing program as is, in which case um, PaperKite would give you a new proposal, um, which I would work with them on to come up with some new recommendations going forward between them and at Seagull Now. And then um, basically at your next meeting, we could present that proposal and go forward. But the prices would be similar for them, the, the, the agency, and also Assuming your budget's the same, the budget would be the same. But in my opinion, as far as exposing the right kind of people to Otsego County, uh, this campaign is is probably one of the most effective uh, that has been run. Just because it's purely this, this is putting Otsego County in front of the right kind of people that would not have seen it otherwise. Whether or not they are converting and turning into uh, actual businesses in the county or people moving to the county. I can't speak to, and I also I don't believe that's really the job of the marketing. I think the marketing's job in this case is to put Otsego County uh, in front of these people, you know, capture their interest, and then if there's enough interest there, you know, that's when they take over in their research or, you know, the sales process takes over. So that kind of in summary is what's going on with the campaign. Are there any call to action in terms of contacting Otsego now? That we've heard from so usually the contact comes in form of uh, an email that i get um and then that email address is added to a mailing. list that the mailing list that we have and uh paper kite has been doing mailings as emails blasts as well so beyond just the targeted ads that chris brought up okay chris is it is it you know me my approach is it possible to critique the content of our website 
uh, as far as having the information we should have to bring some people farther down the funnel. I'm assuming we can look back at analytics and confirm we have that much traffic coming in. Then it could, because I mean, five percent increase of thirty thousand people would be some, you know, significant uh, more opportunities to to nail something down as far as progress. So, is there something you and or paper kite or someone else should do to critique what we have? Is it what is competitive in the marketplace for soliciting business movement? You know, this is the tough question, uh, Tom. I think. Um... Because you know we're not selling you know lampshades or widgets where it's you know when we when we as a, I own my own marketing company unrelated to this and when we're selling a widget it's real simple we run the online ads how many widgets did you sell it's working it's not working uh, with this you know it's it's such a bigger thing for these individuals that are searching so it's my thing is I look at the numbers and I say okay well we got a hundred thousand people that came to the Etsy Now website a website that might do a couple thousand a year without the advertising and you know the question is okay well great a hundred thousand people are they the right kind of the people are they the wrong kind of people um, I think we need to look at um, anything we could possibly do to create some type of you know we we tried to do that kind of download your you know uh, your step-by-step -step guide to Otsego County something that basically shows us, okay, these are the right kind of people. I mean, I think that's the challenge you could put forward to paper kite if you move forward again. You know, anything we can do that's going to kind of give us some type of uh, uh, inclination, like, are these the right kind of people? But as you know, if you were searching um, for different counties to move your business, you know, you're going to do these searches, you're going to make your notes, you're not necessarily going to contact the local IDA from your first search. Uh, and, and, you know, make an inquiry. So it's, it's a little bit challenging. So I, I mean, I've been looking at it as get the most amount of people as possible that are the right kind of people to see Etsego now as an option. I, I really think that's your best bet. Um, but yeah, I understand, you know, anything we can do to kind of understand are those the right people and coming down the funnel. Um, I think that's just going to be an ongoing challenge. All right. So you've noted, obviously, we've increased the, the traffic at the web, and I don't know if this is something paper credit is tracking or <laughs> what provider is um, to understand potential clicks per session, too. Are they are they going deeper into the into the web itself, into the domain itself with, you know, is it two clicks per visit, three clicks per visit, one click, and then they're out? Do we have any of that data? Yeah, we do. In fact, at any time, there is a live link that's provided by PaperKite. And anybody on the board, anybody at Seagull County, I, uh, at, at Seagull Now, they can click that link and they can look at all of that data. And I have it right in front of my screen right now, actually. The uh, cost per click, the impressions, uh, the CTR, all that stuff is right there. You can kind of you can see how long they're staying on the page. Are they going to internal pages? And they're looking at that data as well, and it's presented to at Seagull Now. And of course, you know, 100,000 people, only a percentage of them are actually going to internal pages or, you know, doing what we want them to do. But yes, we do have that data. Okay, great. And, and PaperKite is working on a report for the end of the, this marketing. Okay, so, that's kind of I think they and said that's that they a, have... That's a summary they're working on, but at any time you can access the raw data. Great. Yeah, a couple of questions, uh, Chris. Uh, really, two questions. Uh, number one, the the will, we, will the report also include those who've actually taken some kind of action? I mean, I, I mean, emailed here. Is that what they're asked to do? If they I don't, want additional information, I, mean, uh, I think it's great to have that kind of exposure in terms of number of people looking at the website, uh, but also you know those next steps. I mean, they actually someone email you say they're directed to email here. Or is that something that some choose to do? Um, some choose to do it, and it's it's not necessarily, it's an email that comes right from the website. So it's where you can put your name in and you put your email address, and then you put personal or business, and it comes to me in that form. And so then I have the email address, and then I add it. So I don't know that that report will have that list because that's something that we keep but separate. I think but those it'll, numbers would be helpful. Yeah. 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 In terms of evaluating. And my second question, um, Chris, is: Is there anything in the campaign? that is uh, looking to uh, kind of catch the wave of uh, people uh, looking to you know, get out of the metropolitan areas 
and into these bucolic area that we have and, and to work remotely. Yeah, I don't know if, um, you know, one of the things when we present this summary, I can represent to you guys the whole campaign. But what we did as a reminder is we identified, uh, I think it was five or six people in Otsego County that have relocated from other areas. And what we did was we went and we photographed them and we videoed them and we wrote a whole article about each of them. And the advertising for that lifestyle of Otsego County, for basically the people would see these ads, they would click on it, and then they would read an article about somebody that actually did it. So uh, I can't remember all the people we interviewed, but you know, one one lady moved from downstate and she opened up this like craft store, and then another, and then we also um, we did uh, an employee at Ioxis who moved from another area and got a high tech job, um, and so the idea is. Uh, they would, someone would see the ad and they'd read kind of an inspirational story about how this person increased their quality of life, works remotely, whatever it might be. And so part of the campaign is is delegated to to, to those uh, individuals you just described, the people that would like to kind of have a, a different type of lifestyle, country lifestyle. Yeah, in the first year we did it, we tried to target the wave of anybody moving. And I think that once that kind of passed and we didn't get necessarily the follow through, if you will, we went to more targeted on businesses and business relocation. Okay, so I don't know if you're looking for kind of any other questions, first of all, for Craig? Um, you know, an answer right now, we can obviously discuss it. I think the general feel from the team, at least last year, was having marketing is beneficial. <laughs> um, so my gut is if nothing has changed major, we probably want to continue with some kind of marketing plan, whether that remains to be the same footprint and same budget, I think that probably is worth a proposal from Paperkite. Does everyone agree with that? Mm -hmm. and, and obviously working with Chris on that as well. Okay, so it seems pretty unanimous that we'd like to uh, see the proposal for a marketing plan for next year. If that's okay. something, I don't know, if you're, obviously I'm assuming you'll communicate that with paper kite or do we need to send yeah I'll, I'll, t I'll tell them to give you a new proposal and um then the next time the next time you meet and we give and i give you that summary that they give me i can give you that as well perfect okay is, that, is this going to be a, a one year or two year chris We've been going it's, a, it's been it's been one year it's been a year okay. at a time and also because the campaign ends and we're at a key seasonal milestone, in other words, we actually turn the campaign off in the dead of winter, you can keep the campaign running. Like if it's going to take you two, three months to approve the bigger campaign, you probably should keep the campaign running month to month um, just so we don't lose, you know, seasonally, you know, especially with real estate related stuff, this is the season. So you don't want your campaign to turn off in July. But um, yeah, it's one year at a time. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Give us the update and we look forward to next month's summary and proposal. All right, have a good afternoon, morning. Bye-bye. All right, so we will move into the May 12th committee meeting minutes. Any questions or corrections? All right, if not, I'll take a motion. So moved. Steve, second. Okay. Take a pick. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Project trackers. Not a ton of movement happening, I think, here, Jody, correct? But if you wanted to just do any kind of brief updates or points of interest on the trackers. So, Oniana Reliant? Um, I don't on the rail yards, um, we did yesterday have a Zoom meeting with um, ICERTA and the engineering firm Ramble. Um, they had three other engineers on there. So we're actually starting to work on that project. Um, Megan and I actually making you a lot of copies. We really appreciate that. Um, that would geothermal here, correct? Yes, on the geothermal study. Uh, they asked if we had any type of uh, logs. Um, Groundwater um, at the flood, and oddly enough, we do. Um, it was done by no, Alvin Turney that no longer exists. I guess if we need a study, we got a study done already. <laughs> no, 
more studies. Yeah. Let's do go. No more studies. Got so brown, brown water supply. Brown water depth of how far Basically, groundwater runs between three to six feet below the surface. Mm -hmm. Some areas are pretty shallow. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a huge aquifer here. The Susquehanna River Basin Commission, which controls it all, was up here when a diaper plant was built and they used water to cut things. And their assessment was that you couldn't pump it dry to work that. So, and they've never turned down a, a, an economic development project with fears of water supply. So, I know uh, here it's it's a lot of water. So, that's another challenge. Yeah, the top of the island had no proximity. Right. But they're well yeah. millions. They're very popular. Like, yeah. And when they're not, the senator used to yell at us. Yeah. And they came around. Mm -hmm. So, are, are they doing it yeah. horizontal system or vertical? Because the groundwater would be an issue for a horizontal system, possibly, but not not an issue for a vertical system. They're, they're actually looking at, I think, five different systems on how to define it. Um, they're supposed to give me that information within the next week of all of the Barring complications, running, you know, horizontal pipes deeper than drilling, you know, vertical wells. So the groundwater could, could be an issue. And are the dates on this accurate? So we're looking at basically a year for this study. Okay. The dates on the master plan, is that accurate? So essentially we're looking at a year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's happened with the rail yards is um, that probably Andrew can speak to this as well. Um, we were contacted, we, there, there was a meeting set up, um, I think it was Monday, Monday or Tuesday, uh, between Mr. Klein, who runs the county's movie, uh, mm -hmm. and a company that is called Sinelis, uh, that's looking to the possibility of building a new uh, I guess studio for movie making um, in upstate New York. Um, they expressed interest in the Oneonta rail yards, and that was primarily because it's in an opportunity zone. There are big benefits of being in an opportunity zone. Uh, so he asked me to reach out to the um, general manager, which I did. Uh, he got back to me and said that it was very good information that we said he could pass along to his team. Um, and hopefully they're going to come up this summer and take a site to the site. Um, the other site that they are, they had been referred to was the one in the town of Maryland uh, by Senator Oberacker. Oh, is Cornfield up there? Yeah. Um, which doesn't have gas, water, or sewer. It does. It does have town water now. I guess, yes. Jody. There is yeah, water. Yeah, there's probably water. water yeah. yeah, the town extended water to the site to Smoky Hollow. <clears throat> no sewer. Okay, so still don't see anything that's been changing our course at this point. You yeah. know, thermal study, and then once. Uh, Robinson vacates, they'll be cleaning up the lot that they're, are they out there now? Are they storing? Yeah, no, yeah. they're working there. They'll be there for a while. Well, yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the rail yards? Was the, um, uh, I, I know you heard about the having projects submitted you know, for the uh, Environmental Bond Act consideration. Yeah. I see. I see a 5922. Yeah, that related to the geothermal? That's yeah, that's right. right. That's what that's mm -hmm. what I took in terms of uh, picking yeah. up the. Oh yeah, that was census. That was reported on last one. Um, the state Empire State Development requested it to list on a possible bond, act. and we put this site in because in theory the bond act would do infrastructure improvements for one of the sewer. I don't expect that it's while we submitted it that there. I can't believe it's the two the architects have to bond actually, but they may. It's, it, I don't think most people want to see additional debt on the other state. 
So we're in if that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could be. We're good. Okay. Where are we with the rail yards? Somebody wants to build a studio there. Corey might want to build there. Uh, so we we're talking about geothermal activity there. At what point do we need to commit to something that's going to exclude some other things? If geothermal moves forward, does that mean others that don't work? Once we get an offer. <laughs> well, yeah, I, know, I mean, the, the geothermal system, we apply for it. Uh, it's a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. The problem with geothermal is that in order to put a geothermal system in for that entire business park or even all of Main Street, it's going to be probably in the multi million dollar range. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing this because it was free grant money from the state to look at the feasibility. And if it's feasible, in theory, the state is going to have a pool of money set aside to construct some of these. Well, if it's feasible, in long term, it could be a benefit. Mm -hmm. right? It could be worth the multi million dollar investment over time. So, you know, I, I, it's new and different, but, you know, I, I don't want to do something else and that comes online and it would work. You know, and and then you don't do that, which long term would have one of the better benefits of everything we're looking at. You mean someone actually builds something that puts in a pro propane heating system yeah. and then geothermal comes out. Right. Yeah, so and if the geothermal is good, it is is not it's adequate, it could be pumped somewhere, you know, it could even limit it to that site, depending on how much it is done. <laughs> That's the reason we actually submitted this grant application that this is a vacant site and are saying unlike unlike downtown Oneana. Which has their own gas systems and their own heating mm -hmm. systems that now have to be retrofitted to a geothermal system. We said, doesn't it make sense to look at and install a geothermal system before businesses start moving mm -hmm. so that they can take advantage of that? This was kind of a unique project because the state has never approved one on vacant. So they're doing it as a test. To say is this actually feasible to say let's let's build the system and then companies come in. Um all their other projects they approved in New York State have been retrofits. And we're saying that's just a waste of money. And that's where they bought into giving us the grant to do the feasibility study. So I know like Jody and I have talked in terms of just the focus for really are being the study and marketing and the cleanup of the lot. And if we get an offer, then as a group will have to talk about what does that mean to the overall long-term plan. You know, I know you've got Corning still kind of in the hopper. We've got a couple interested parties, but until somebody kind of actually says, hey. It would seem Corning's image, how they cherish it, them being in a geothermal facility would be advantageous to them. I mean, mm -hmm. And that's what I mean, doing a study and having right. feasibility could yeah. be mm -hmm. both ways, right? <laughs> well, that's, that's interesting thing. Rainbow engineers, while they're doing this geothermal study for us, one of their other divisions is the engineering firm for Corning. Mm -hmm. So I brought that up in a meeting yesterday that, that, that Corning may be interested in putting a building on this firm. Um, and we give them more information on the building size and the investment um, and have their engineers maybe talk to Corning about the benefits of doing a geothermal. You know, Wade, Wade Barney has drilled the many, many geothermal wells, some of the colleges that have put them in. Um, but there's somebody to be with consulting with if we ever get to that point. Um, yeah, we're we way based from that. It's, I think it's a great idea to have the study done and figure out what the feasibility is, quite frankly. It would bleed some Pony on an area people. This so is a PR point. Yeah. Well, it's also, it makes long, it, it's, it's a good idea. I mean, it would happen to please them too, but it's not, you know, you're not going against logic. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, it's a long, long term, but it's yeah. expensive to put it in. Yeah. As Julie points out, I think it's uh, more feasible with a uh, new construction. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Retro, yeah. with all this retro fit yeah. yeah. after. And what's interesting is that. Oneana, between our project, the downtown project, and SUNY Oneana, they, they've gotten three feasibility studies started this year. That's the most in any community in New York State. Well, we're good at studies. Yeah, we're good at studies. <laughs> we're good at studies. <laughs> I did a study when I built my apps and considered myself an environmental. I hear George Seacroft, but 
when I look at the cost of uh, ground source, you know, geothermal, I mean, where did my propane tank? Yeah. <laughs> Say about this studies, we're not paying for it. Yeah, right. Well, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So moving on to Richfield Springs. Again, here the focus really being infrastructure and extension of utilities to the park this year. Um, any kind of major key. I do want to know just on the grant management as we get multiple grants, is making sure we're separating those grants so we have tracking. So it looks like we're trying to track two grants in the same table just so we have visibility of all the different grants and what each of those different kind of requirements and um, timelines are for those to be appropriate here. This one I am concerned ultimately of losing some of those grant monies because we're okay. flying by extensions and dates there. So the, the two developments that we're trying to, well, there's actually three, um, and Larry's on the call from Richfield Springs. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Larry. Good morning, Good morning, everybody. Hey. Um, one of the things that we found is that we have to have certain documents signed off on to send the EDA, you know, in order to get our bid documents approved by them. Um, one of them is a certification from our attorney that we have to claim title to the property. Um, after the research did, he says, I can't sign that because there was never title insurance or anything done on this, a title search done on this. So I told her to go and get title insurance. It's going to cost us about $5,000. Um, and he received the report yesterday. He emailed it last night. Um, he said, he'll go through it this weekend and sit down with me on Tuesday like that. Uh, getting the document signed by him. Um, once he signs it, I have to sign it um, to say that we're still moving ahead with this project. And B, then it goes to our, our engineer um, who signs it and sends actually the final design documents to EDA for approval. Um, so it's been held up a couple of weeks because we didn't have title insurance on it. Um, but must be Hopefully within the next week, we'll have that all resolved and the bid documents will actually go to EDA for their approval. Um, the second thing that happened. Let me ask a quick question. Yeah. What's that? Anybody have an idea what that timeline is like? That um, EDA, they've got to approve the bid documents before they can put out, you put out for bid. Right. I think they'll fairly quickly because they already have the final set that they and, and what they've asked for that the engineer would do was to be able to identify all of their requirements in the bid documents which he's done so it's just a matter of them looking at <coughs> on page 27 the final this requirement on page 39 the final this requirement um, so i don't think it will be that long. and we're doing water sewer yes correct that's correct now I don't know, Larry, did you have any chance to talk to Mandela about where she is on her on her calculations? I have not, but I certainly can put that on my to-do list. Okay. Oh, and we're, are we still waiting on that for movement forward when it comes to Yes. Um, so now, my <laughs> belief, excuse me. Excuse me. I, my belief was we were moving forward with this park with or without Mandela's commitment. Is that is that changed? Uh, I think NYSEC was looking for gas, gas size pipelines. So they were trying to understand usage. Again, chicken and egg moment, but they wanted some estimates in terms of the potential usage for Andela to determine the line that they would send in there, correct? That's correct. Okay. They don't go to the Public Service Commission unless they have a real client or an interior real client. To okay. Run gas. So they refuse to right now invest any design or time work on the gas line until Andela can give them some calculations for what she would need. So otherwise, I mean, we, we'll still, we can still go to construction, we can still extend the water and sewer, but we can't extend the gas line because I see well, we do it and use it. Right, and I think Cindy's banks, I think Cindy's banks are leery to help her get money until the site is 100 percent so at least right. now I have, now i have something more concrete to talk to cindy about so well my concern is i just had the pleasure of 
repositioning a gas line. And they were more than happy to do it as long as I paid for everything they did. So I don't understand what we are paying. Okay, what engineering NYSIG is going to have to do when they're going to give us a bill for all that they do. I, I don't. Yeah, what, what they're saying is that based on the load, both for electric and gas, it's difficult for them to say is it a one inch line, is it a two inch line, is it a four inch line that they need? So if they don't know what. What to design it? So, so it, 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 you you need a puppet company. Yeah, I'm going to use that yeah. term. You need a puppet company that says I need this much gas in order for them to be able to submit the plan. Yeah, right. Whether Andela goes in there or not, ultimately you've got to have somebody that's a potential client that that would be going in there and give you some usage to base the study. Is anybody going to be crucified? No, that's never the state. And they put a line that needs too big in there. So that's so that we're going to pay for it anyway. I, that's my fear. Like, the, the whole thing is why, in my mind, how, how, how bureaucrats and critics can slow things down so much. It doesn't matter if it needs a two inch and we put a three inch. We're going to pay for every inch of the line, likewise, and all the excavation and the engineering to do it. I don't understand. You know, we're, we're making a mountain out of a molehill here. I, somebody needs to tell them, well, I won't say what I can say to them, but it's just insane. Well, and not to mention it's, it's, it's one client out of potential multiple clients in the park. Right. And name also other clients could come in five times. Exactly. Right? So that's why I don't understand. But you know, we built for that reason. Exactly. So, so we'll barely have enough. Well, yeah, they're proud of it. Sounds well, like another. Go ahead, Larry. Sorry. Another another approach. I mean, the IDA is is essentially a legitimate business concern. You guys are are building a business park. You're building that park to have a saleable, shovel-ready place to bring businesses in, and you need to be able to market certain features of that site in order to attract those businesses. One of those features certainly is going to be a gas supply. So, you know, uh, the site yes, itself is fine. the site itself is actually a business. Yes, I was wondering actually if we could look at other business parks of similar size to understand what. Mm -hmm. Average, like let's look at you know five and yeah, find an average kind of utilization rate and see if that they would work with that. Yeah. Well, and it's mother may I crap. Yeah, we decide what it is we need. We ask them to build it. I, I mean, we're we're getting pulled through the small holes for no apparent reason of logic at all that I can see. You know, once again, if, if we're going to pay to put the pipe in, they're not they're not losing any money on the engineering or the, or the installation. They themselves. Yeah. So if they put too big a pipe in, it doesn't. It's no harm, no foul to them. So why do we, we put too big? Well, we if we put in, I, well, what's, I mean, once again, I don't understand. We're, yeah, we, because we, we could have growth in that big. park, we'd like to have a, a four inch instead of a two inch or whatever. And the, the, you know, there's a, there's the differential cost between a two inch pipe and a four inch pipe probably is pretty minimal. It's it's Probably. it's the labor and the engineering that spends the money. And there's, there's another problem. You know, I heard Cheryl mention earlier i heard cheryl mention earlier these deadlines i've been really concerned about all of these deadlines and i know there are some projects going on right now in oneida county that are out to bid the bids are back they're purchasing the pipe and they can't get their hands on the pipe till next may so i i think I, I, this, I hope we can consider going to these various places that have these monies available for us and starting to work on some extensions right away because i'd hate to lose all of this money that that works so hard to find yeah they, definitely agree they, they they will not approve an extension until we go out to bid and with the bids results come back with a schedule for one construction because what they're saying is that if we approve an extension of six months you may need a year. Mm -hmm. we, we want to know so like the construction two. company who's going to yeah. come back and say, yeah. this is our schedule. And we can't start until May. So we're not going to finish until a year and a half. Well, once again, we, that clock can't even start until we know we have gas secure. Right? Yes. So the big first hurdle we've got to get over is that, that commitment from them and what they're going to do and when they're going to do that. Not to have it done, but commit to do it. Nice that we'll have and be at the site. So. I'm, I'm a little odd. Do we have our that no, we're still sending things CSV from a bid standpoint that we could then send out to contractors for bid, correct? We are are we waiting on no the nice thing we're waiting on is for personal sign off the title. Okay.
So we can move ahead, but then okay. it's, I think it's working in conjunction. All the documents go to EDA. Yeah. You said you would sign it already. Okay. Um, no, but where is, the, where is the gas line on those documents? Or those skills so specs only for water and sewer? What we're sending them is only for water and sewer. Okay. Might be slightly confused, but. <laughs> well, well, we also might need a conduit to the back door of the Public Service Commission who could maybe move the bumps out. <laughs> You know, because this is foolish. It's, 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 we were told Richfield Springs we could develop an industrial park because we have an ample supply of natural gas. And now, for some reason, it's there, but we can't seem to connect it to an industrial park. That, that's, that's insane. That, that's so really unacceptable. So, I think yeah. on a hearing, as we do, we need to force the issue further yes. in understanding the gas situation, uh, whether that be studying comparable size business parks and getting average utilizations that we can utilize or quite honestly to you know, just go with the biggest pie, right? Let's just start there. Um, and again, we're paying for that. If we have to come back from that, you can always do that within the scope of work, right? It's a change order. Um, but I feel like if we don't get moving, I don't think we can, my personal feeling, I don't want to wait on Andela on, on Andela to be able to progress. Right, right. so that's yeah. 100%. Yeah. Two, just two quick questions. One. The specs for the gas line are going to come from NYSE, is that correct? Or is it going to come from the engineering firm or work with them? No. Yeah, and, and so one, they're, they're going to need to approve the specs. And two, if you put the pipe in, they don't have to connect it to their source. So, so I mean, we're, you know, that whole issue, that's another whole issue. Put the water, put the sewer in, and let's keep working with nice and see if we can get something done with that. Yeah, that's what I'm like again, yeah. hopefully bring it together at the same time. You don't want to dig the trench twice. Okay. Um Joe, in your discussions with uh NYSEG, um have they ever hinted that uh, part of all this smaller pipe and something barriers are running into? Uh, has to do with uh, sort of the anti-fossil fuel philosophy at the uh, PSC these days and you know, pressure on the utilities to uh, not invest in um, investments in fossil fuel infrastructure. They, they've raised that issue, that, but they, they've agreed that they're not going to call an extension of the natural gas line. They're going to call it an extension of the that. The problem with NYSEG, and I ran into this in the house. We submitted an application to the city. We wanted to know the size of our BTUs that we were using. And we rejected five or six times. And it's, we ended up saying that when we decided to actually buy a new furnace, our furnace died. The company president of the furnace that we bought called NYSE. And the guy says, I'll, I'll call them and tell them, I just need two numbers. Mm -hmm. well, why were we filling out an eight page application if all you needed was two numbers? And they, they have so six departments that have to get paid. And <laughs> you know, it's, it's really this guy coming up to the furnace company, knew somebody at NYSE, and he said, I'll take care Yeah, they don't need we're dealing with a community relations person and she won't let me go any further than her. And she's just like, this is this is by the book what we do. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. But I think to Larry's point, we can say we are the company, yeah, right? Let's right. try that angle and try a different angle because I, I just think relying on it. To yours and his point, time is our biggest. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. diddling around here way too long. Yeah. I think, you know, I think I'll talk to, to Miss Andela today. But if she gives us her numbers this afternoon, you guys still have half of this site that you're going to sell to un, some undetermined business, and you need capacity there past what we're going to put in for a tenant that probably is going to take a piece of this. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So that 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 idea that they need all of the businesses known up front is just a little bit strange. Well. It's the same in the only on a business park. They only ran the gas line so far, and everybody who wants to come connect into the business park has to get a nice group 
numbers of how much usage they will right. use before they'll extend the line. Well, here we've got scarcity. You know, in cold winter days, we don't have enough gas to run to please all of their customers. So they're making commitment to a commercial customer. You know, the 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 interruptibles will be interrupted more often, and that's part of their management down here. We've been told once again there's ample supply of natural gas in Richfield Springs, so scarcity shouldn't be the same concern that legitimately it is here. Yeah. They still got to bring their pipe to the site. Now, how that gets split up amongst the parcels on the site is kind of immaterial. The bigger, piece, the bigger piece of it is getting the, the main feed to the business park. Yep. Great. Said by very logical people working in the very logical system. <laughs> Um, the only other thing I, I did have a question is making sure have we created the water and sewer district? I know that that show has started and was supposed to be completed in March of this year or last year. Um, have we gotten the water and sewer district created? No, I'm still waiting for Jill Scott to okay. come to an agreement with the other two attorneys. Okay. Okay. So another point. And we are we are ready to get to get that done for you guys. Um, the village has had a change of administration. They're still very much in support of this project, and the, the town board is, is ready to to get these agreements done and signed and put in place. So, we're able to get done all we can. So I say, yeah, those are the two big top. Nice again, district creation. Yes. Okay. Um, the last thing that developed is that the state of New York was given, I think, eight million dollars from the Appalachian Regional Commission for um eligible ARC projects. Um, the Southern Tier A group um, requested a list of design projects for industrial parks. We really felt there's a real need for that. That a lot of people don't have money to design an industrial park. Turns out that we get two hundred fifty thousand dollars for design or up to a half a million dollars for construction. So we submitted Steel Springs Business Park for an additional $500,000. That list was sent to the Department of State. The Department of State says we'd like all these projects bills for applications by the end of August and we'll have contracts signed by September. Um, okay, great. Which is <laughs> totally worth it if we get it. <laughs> because I know there's going to be a cost bill. Okay, hey, anything more on the business park? I've been talking about this business park for years. I remember when back in the they had to do a study on the Indian. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very sensitive hump. Yeah. That was a yeah. few years. They yeah. think Indians used to live here, and they yeah. kept in place. <laughs> Larry, anything else you want to share with us today? Any questions you have? Uh, no, thank you. Thank All you right. guys thank for continuing to work on this for Richfield. Appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. <clears throat> All right. So, taking a quick look at the director's report, are there any questions here or any key points, Jody, other than what's been written that you would like to point out? Uh, the only two points is that, in addition to the ARC grant application I'm working on, I'm right now working on an ESD grant application, uh, probably for about $162,000. That would be. Uh, 10% of the budget for the purchase of this building and to go ahead with their building a new building. Um, so I was going to ask this, does, does it commit us to buying this building? Does that commit us to buying this building? No. Okay. So we, we actually accept grants. Okay. That's, a, that's another application. Just, that was when we already had in to fund the purchase, correct? Right? Right. We we have a requirement that we have to provide 20% right. to the EDA grant application or the rural development grant application. So this will limit us down to 10%. Right. And the state will pick up 10%. Yeah, and that's uh, that's allowable under the federal. Yes. Um, I checked with again with because it is a state grant. They don't care where the grant comes from as long as it's not federal. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other one is systematic power systems, IOXIS. Um, we submitted a grant application for them last month. I am somewhat shocked to say that this 
the staff nominate recommended for approval. So it's going before the full board of directors uh, later this month. Um, and it looks like they'll approve a $750,000 community development block grant for IOXIS uh, for purchase of equipment for a big product line. Okay. Are there any jobs associated with that? Uh, it's retaining 22 jobs and creating another 30 jobs. Um, Which has to be evidenced and reported on. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What, what was complicated in this was that Normally, in order to show that jobs being retained, you have to say, were they going to be lost? Were they given pink slips? Where there's a bullet on a bullet board saying, as of December 31st, these jobs are being terminated. In this particular case, um, we identified all the manufacturing jobs as opposed to research or administration jobs. And we said the manufacturing was going to be full to Tennessee. Um, but they would keep this as a research facility. Um, so we looked at the 22 jobs uh, that are being retained. We had them fill out Walmart income survey forms. Um, and we looked at the new jobs being proposed, again, for education and, and salary requirements. Um, and the state agreed with it. Shocked. I mean, originally, they, we, we made such a good case that the company needed this grant in order to proceed. So they were going to have to do this. They said, well, if we give you the grant, what it, it looks like in such financial bad shape, huh? what's your chance of success? Um, and we explained to him that we're going to have an agreement with the company's president that he will personally guarantee this or give money back. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, uh, the, the town is the municipal. Uh, sorry. The town is the municipal sponsor. Yes. Uh, we will have a, uh, an agreement with the town to administer on their behalf. Um, it'll be extremely similar to what we did with uh, custom lunch items. Um, so I did have, in terms of, obviously, the it sounds like the Full Hills have, and the banks have turned down our proposal. So at this point, I'm not looking to see, we're not adjusting our stance at all. Yeah, we're doing it. Oh, discuss the financial. Yeah, so we can do that. Finance. Okay. <laughs> um, Nathan's been in touch with the attorneys for Viral Energy. Uh, they're looking to schedule a closing once they get a date from the buyer. Uh, and What's going on with Springbrook? Let me kind of explain that. Are we going to do an unfinished business or? Well, I was still doing a report. Oh, okay. Um, so the Springbrook, understand. they're looking to close by the end of the month. The problem is that the cost of construction went from like $6 million to $8 million. Mm -hmm. And so we're concerned that the assessor is going to raise the assessment on that. I think we talked about this last time, did we not? Sorry? We talked about this last time or at the board meeting? Oh, okay. And then we'll talk about it. <laughs> I mean, feel free to give the, the quick well, summary again. But... The assessment issue. Yeah, because we talked about doing another public schedule and another public hearing to cover that. Cover that. Yes, to cover that. And, and if you, the, the real problem now has become is that the, the county is taking all the assessments on. And what the consultant for Springbrook says, well, we were told that the former assessor was going to base the assessments on an income approach or a sales approach. He was not going to do construction. When I talked to the county real property director this week, he said if he has that if he has any that in writing or if he has any documents that the former assessor would read to that would consider that. He goes, but I don't I don't personally like income appraisals and I don't personally like uh, sales because They're from other areas. They're not necessarily based on buildings in this area. Um, he prefers to do construction. So we we don't know when and if the assessor is going to change that number. So you know, it's almost pointless to hold a public hearing as far as I'm concerned because we don't know what the numbers. Are. Yeah, yeah, I think we're slotting it because of the notification, right? And with the hopes that you would that, know, yeah. right? So if we don't, we're going to have to put it off, obviously. Yeah. So, so we're not having the public hearing in June. 
We're scheduling. We, we it's scheduled. It's already scheduled. It's already noticed. So it may or may not happen. If it doesn't happen, we just go on and we say it's been canceled. But yeah, already keep your we just have it. If no one made up, you can say we had it. <laughs> um, so that's it. On my the last thing on the agenda is. So I, I just have two other questions quick on this, uh, and it's not really for just a follow up again, soccer field, seeing kind of the assessment of the irrigation system. That doesn't really tell me a ton in terms of what we might be facing our obligations here moving forward. Um, so I just feel like we really should get, whether it be, I don't know, if Rainbird is still in existence to assess the irrigation and, and provide a report of yeah. Maintenance and or upgrades that are required or necessary at this point in time. That's right. I just haven't had a chance to sit down with the soccer president and his maintenance person to okay. discuss those okay. issues. And then probably not something we can do necessarily openly here. Has the event center application request been responded to? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on the brain <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move I'm to new and unfinished business uh remote access policy now that policy that you sent out to us is that our policy or is that ida policy so hodge and Russ wrote this up for us um just to kind of give us clarification on remote access as it stands by the state and i believe that joe do you want to vote on that at the board yeah we, we're not going to vote on it today we're just doing um we're actually missing i think schedule a on it yeah um, they haven't been able to forward that to us yet uh, but they a lot of IDAs are adopting remote access policies uh, based on. So I guess my question is that's our policy versus the boilerplate policy is can we and do we have the freedom and flexibility to be able to remove the requirement of notification for board members attending remotely? And still be able to, so I don't, again, I don't know how much that is regulation and boilerplate IDA kind of policy. Because it seems like is that the opportunity for us to be able to allow for board members to attend and their vote to count? The the, the real difference the is, is that in the proposed one is that if you have a really good excuse for not attending a meeting, you can do it on. You have to have a really good excuse, like I am in the hospital. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking at like you don't necessarily have to have a really good excuse. I have a meeting at 9 a.m. that I have to be at in Cooperstown. <laughs> I can't come to this yeah, meeting, yeah. Um, right? Um, can we can we build some flexibility? Right. Because we don't want to paint ourselves into a corner. And we right. don't want to have Cheryl have to bring a note. <laughs> oh, my daughter, my daughter. Cheryl, I'll write a note for you anytime. Yeah. I think, unfortunately, it comes down to that if you do want to attend virtually, I have to give notice of where you are. That's I a legal be, requirement. So that's, that's, I'm wondering. Yeah, yeah, I have to say that Cheryl is at. Cooperstown or in her house or wherever she is, and I have to do it within three days. I mean, I see the city do it on their Facebook page when someone is attending virtually and where they're attending from. So we just have to do it. You actually give a physical address? Yeah. Yeah. Because the, technically the public has to be able to, if they want to come right. to your house. Yeah. But that's why I don't understand. I guess, and right. I don't no. get into it, but that's why I don't understand because they're able to come to this no. location, right? right? You're able to come to a location and confront essentially right. the, the, the Here's right. the location. Right. right. So I don't understand why they have to be able to come to each individual location that somebody I, might be at. Yeah. And that's the right, that's the law. That's what I want to yeah. There isn't a there isn't a look, we deal with I deal with arguments with our compliance people all the time about yeah. their interpretation of <laughs> <Right>. the law. <laughs> okay. They always want to do, you know, the, the tape and the glue and the, the to to never have an issue. But if I can access and attend a meeting from Wi-Fi access they can too right they don't have to be at my house correct agree that's what i, that's I think what that, i don't I understand mean, I, I think the problem is is that if you look at andrew he's on view you can't hear any discussion that's going on in that room so there may be six other people off the break who are saying don't vote on this we don't like that but it won't become part of the record so okay well, but, okay but you're giving them this address so they can show up and put it on here well, that's what let me just say that was the original reason that, that people didn't want remote access at all. You know, you're hijacking. This is the public meeting here. Right. That's what I the think, public yeah. wants to come, they come here. I've got something else. I have another back-to-back -back meetings. I can remote in and participate 
the public doesn't come to my house or my office, but they can come here. You're not restricting anyone's access to the meeting. So and why access are, to you via the meeting? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. once again, I, 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 I want a little common sense here. <laughs> okay. so we, it, 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 so just to just that for the CNN, so I can ask him to be at the board meeting and we can. Well, I, I think it's just that question is, is, is as we, as we're seeing IDAs and is there any opportunity to, any flexibility in being able to not state location What's of board members? Is there a it's actually not even just totally wrong. It's not even just IDAs. The way it's, yeah. the whole well, the, the, yeah. society and is maybe going. and or is there an opportunity to do something that's more generic, right? So to get past a bit of maybe the interpretation of the law, generically putting on the website, right? Well, board and, members attending virtually will be available. And, and, and via, think about right? some point we age out and you got to get a new board. Do you think they're all going to drive here? Well, you want the right people to participate, you have to make it functional, workable. There you go. Participate. And PS, all of us are doing more of this at our own jobs. And that's something like, I feel like there was a huge shift in the world, right? Yes. <laughs> and I'm old, but I can't argue with the efficiency. Yeah. You know, it's everything. So that's, I mean, I, I think from not, a policy We understand it's not, it's, so, it's right. legal right. interpreting. And that's my question is, yeah. can we, is there any legal interpretation that would allow us to, I think that's a big thing. And, and I'm not saying we should all be attending from, Nobody should be here, but right. as long as there's representation at the public site for the right. meeting from the from the board and or Atsiko now employees, I feel like even on every time we do a public hearing for night for a project, we have to physically go to that town or village that yeah. the project is in. It makes no sense because I'm sitting there. Because then we stream it, yeah. We <laughs> stream it from there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're not comfortable with that requirement. And go provide a work for us. That's yeah, right. it's got to be. Is there any flexibility? And if there's not, there's not. I mean, right. Well, there. Let me just say, I'm not sure we'll have a contact in Albany for a long. It's legislation adjustment. Something's yeah. got to be rewritten. It's not workable. It's not functional. Like, yeah, that's the other point, very simply, is who is monitoring? Correct. These fourteen thousand uh, meetings that take place every day as to whether or not people are properly posting locations or not. You know, and there's a department. Yeah. <laughs> now we got yeah. <laughs> moving forward. Okay. Um, was there any other comments or questions on the public access remote access? Uh, hey, hey guys, I, I think I'd like to chip in here. Um, we deal with this in the town of Richfield. One of our councilmen lives in Florida for for a quarter of the year. And we were trying to understand the ramifications of remote voting and everything else. So we called the Association of Towns. And they have two wonderful lawyers there. And if you talk to, to Meg, she'll tell you that this is absolutely allowed. And it's, it's possible for one of our councilmen to be somewhere else. You need to notice the address of where he is. And it needs to have public access. And if you talk to the other attorney, she'll tell you, nope, that's not allowed. So there's a lot of ambiguity in the New York state law and the legislature just hasn't caught up to the technologies that exist today. They will, but for right now, there's, you can get a lot of opinions from a lot of very qualified people that, that wrestle with this exact issue. Tell you what so you wanna hear? Push it to our hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So. You're kind of on that a little bit. We'll yeah. we'll see what council says there. Well, this um, policy will be uh, filed. The, yeah. You know, so the oversight. Um, yeah. So if it stands as is, we would have to make the notice. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we already talked about the spring book public hearing. Yeah. Are is there any other new or unfinished business? All right. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, anyone? Same, same. Uh, <laughs> oh, do you, <laughs> I too will skip Shannon's comments. We'll go right into the uh, rest of the agenda. We did get the May 12th Audit Finance Committee minutes. Were there any comments, questions, or adjustments? For me? No. Okay. <clears throat> Motion to approve those. So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any? Opposed. No. Uh, payment of bills. So you have a list of the bills that was attached in spreadsheet form, and on the back of that, you see the deposits also. 
Yeah, Mr. Atkins, any questions, comments there? Yeah. I am happy to say we're, we're keeping up with our umbrella policy. Yeah, I think July is usually the last one. Yes. There, no, no comments about any other. They, they look pretty standard. So the rent, uh, we need to vote on the bills. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all, all those in favor? Or uh, can I get a motion? Sorry. I'll second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. And uh, the looks like we're getting uh, all the round payments. Is there any changes or modifications to any of that that you foresee? Um, Brooks only has one more month. <laughs> Paid Paid off. Off. Yeah. Great. Nice. So that's the only difference. Crazy. <clears throat> okay. So rent going up or our payment with I access going up? Did it go up? Just wondering. They're getting a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What's the uh, status of the Delgado's office here? Oh, yeah. What's the status of uh, Delgado's office here? Well, they were here the other day. They were here, and he, um, the staff told me that he was taking inventory of the office, and he didn't really elaborate on that. Um, no one has reached out to me from their office. Their lease runs until 2023. So, and they're still paying it. They're still yeah. paying it, yeah. Well, I know uh, right. I'm not as familiar with the federal level, the state level, even if there's a vacancy, they yeah. keep the operation going and the staff mm -hmm. servicing yeah. the district. Yeah. Although this, there'll be a uh, special election on August 23rd for the balance of right. the year. But is this lease with the, uh, the federal government? Yeah. Yes. So I can reach out and just see what the status of that is, where we are. They'll probably just go on the federal yeah. government. Just take it out with the check. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe you don't want to reach out. <laughs> don't, don't reach out. Don't yeah. ask questions along the check. So the next point, we have financials in there uh, with uh, Jody's budget. Um, any any particular items you want to review with respect to the financials or budget, Jody? No, they're pretty, pretty standard. Um... I, I will just say this probably in the next 12 months, we've we've had discussions at the audit every year about fallow funds not returning uh, much in terms of interest. We may see in the next 12 months some opportunity to take some of that, and we'll have to do some yeah. cash flow studies and decide what we want to do with that. But we'll have some opportunity as yeah. rates start to take up. And more with CRT, right? We want yeah. to have the opportunity. Primarily because of the marketing campaign. I'm not sure we can. We've got to pay for that. Mm -hmm. um, right now, Megan's pulling her hair out, working on doing the drawdown request for the right yards. Um, and that's going to pose a gap for next yeah. year. So we need a cash flow study. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm concerned about that. Yeah. But we do have some unanticipated revenues that we're not budgeting for this year, such as uh, Springbrook's project. So that Okay. Well, we'll want more to come on that, so we'll yeah. take a look. I believe me, I like working here, so I want to bring in more money. <laughs> any any uh, questions? Uh, with respect yeah. to the next piece? Okay. Uh, new and unfinished business, Southern Tier 8 Telecom Conference. Um, Southern Tier 8 is, is doing, I think, in two weeks, a telecom uh, conference on broadband and water. They actually have a good speakers. Um, they asked every IDA to contribute two thousand dollars to us, and I said, "Are you kidding me?" So I reached out to the chamber and says, "Would you guys like to contribute two thousand dollars?" John came back and says, "How about if we split it a thousand dollars a piece?" Can, what, what, can I ask what the money's for? It's basically to offset the rental of the hotel. Um, what, you know, what, what kind of a question? What is it they're going to tell us that we don't want to do? Telecommunication conferences in person. I mean, we already know the gaps. We already know it takes uh, money to fix it. Uh, you know, 
I also know okay. Elon Musk for $800 yeah. of equipment. You can pay $100 a month and have all the internet access for, for low orbit satellite. So, I mean, we're going to have a meeting and spend a lot of time and money to tell to review what we already all know what's going on. If you had not had your head in the sand, there's no solution. They're not coming to tell us the secret. Well, in theory, they're going to have people there recommending solutions, but I, I no, they don't take time and money. We already know. I have once again, how the well, yeah, well, vendors that want to sell, correct? Right. Well, better work. Sorry, what's your recommendation, Jody? Originally, I was going to say no altogether to choices. However, when Sean said that he was willing to split it, I thought, well, this is the first time we've actually had some interaction with the chamber who are actually working on something together. So I was going to recommend that we actually work with the chamber. Well, what school. does that mean? Does that mean that somebody from the chamber and somebody from the NDA? What's that? I would assume that we would have six free slots to let whoever we want to go to. It, it, when is it happens? Um, and where? I think it's two weeks from Tuesday. And it's in Binghamton? Yes. Okay. Um, I was going to recommend that as opposed to me going, because I've been attending all of the meetings and it's just a waste of my time. Because I wrote my case. <laughs> well, it should it's be not a I was going to actually one of the slots be taken by the new town attorney because she's going to be involved with dealing with um, expanding Wi Fi here in the county. Great. Okay. Sounds good. You good with that, Mr. Bye. But there's, yeah. there's still at least whatever is your pledge. I, if they were splitting a difference, I'd probably. Sounds like a thousand dollars of goodwill. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Could we uh, get some kind of report from the conference? Yes. Is, this, is this like a two day conference? No, it's a one day breakfast, lunch, and cocktails. That's the. the, the, the yeah. I'll go. I'll go for the yeah, cocktails. I'll represent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's be, I'll drive him. <laughs> be the driver. <laughs> I'm not going to go for the day. I'm going to go for the cocktail. I'm going to get $1,000 worth, guys. <laughs> so I think we got support. Yeah, I seriously might want to go down to dinner. Not that I'll know anything. Okay. Great. Um, that's all I have on. Uh, I see executive session. We're going to make a motion to go to executive session. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second. Those in favor? For the purpose of discussing the financial financial performance of a potential uh, settlement of the debt. And Andrew stay. Andrew can stay. Yeah, we just 